So our first question has to do with the VIX. And I'm glad to see a lot of people being curious about the VIX because the VIX, in my opinion, is the one indicator that should that you should spend the most time getting to know as in my career as a trader it has served me very well in regards to picking out market bottoms or market tops both from a long term basis or the short or short term basis and in last week's classes we elaborated on that more so I recommend reviewing these two class uh, classroom sessions from last week where we talked about how the VIX can help you shape your bias which I'll talk more about in a moment because it did so today for myself personally and how it can help you from a longer term basis as an investor time your entries and exit points in the marketplace. So first question has to do with something I tweeted today and mentioned in the big board room. When the market was bouncing this morning, I said that the move higher today was not being accompanied by a big move lower in the VIX, so you've got to approach it from the short side. When I say you've got to approach it from the short side, that's just me saying, you know, I'd be shorting this bounce. Okay. Now, why would a big move higher today in the stock market that wasn't accompanied by a big move lower in the VIX? And the time of this tweet was at 1017 AM. So SPY was at Spy was, so that's, uh, what was that? I guess that's central time. Yeah. So Spy was around 1368. S&P 500 was right around 1332, 1333 or so. Okay. And at that time, the VIX was down around 2160. Okay, so it was only, it was actually pretty flat. I believe it was down less than a percentage or so. So it closed Friday at 2189. So at 11.17 when I was talking about it, it was around 2169. Okay, so why would this move higher that we saw in the markets right at the open not joined by a significant move lower in the VIX, why would that have served as a short signal for me? Anybody have any ideas of their own? From what we know about the VIX that we learned last week and have learned over the last couple weeks, why would a market rally that isn't accompanied by a move lower in the VIX be considered short signal? Yeah, I like Blah's answer. And Hawk, I like your answer, but what do you what do you mean since the VIX didn't signal a true move? What would what would the VIX have done if it was signaling a quote unquote true move? Yeah, it would have moved opposite of the market, because like Akru says, it's an inverse relationship. So and more than that, yes, it would have moved substantially because the market moved substantially, okay? And the VIX is an inverse relationship. And the key about its inverse relationship is it isn't one that is based on a small sample. What I mean by that is sometimes you see correlations play out. For instance, sometimes Apple leads the market higher, you know, or lower, but that's, 
that's more recently. That's more recent. Once Apple became, you know, the dominant stock it is, right? Or um, maybe you're seeing some correlation show up between silver and gold or something over the last couple weeks. You know, I'm just talking hypothetically. The reason I like relying on the VIX is because you'll see, as I pointed out last week in class, and as I'll do here again, you'll see that not only is this an inverse correlation of the last year or last couple weeks, this is an inverse correlation that is has been very reliable throughout much of the last five years with the exception of this brief period here when you had both of them kind of downtrending at the same time but you did still see an inverse correlation there as well but that was just kind of the the weakest ratio so that's why today when I see the VIX not moving lower at the open, even though the S&P 500 is, that's my basis for making a comment like this on Twitter, that you've got to approach it from the short side, you know, unless the VIX starts to give you a different signal. So I tweeted that around 10.17, so 11.17 Eastern. You can see that S&P 500 went from 1332 down to 13, you know, 23, and the options that I traded at that time were the 135 options. They went from a dollar and seventy cents up to two dollars and forty cents in this time frame right here. So, you know, about a half hour that move was made in those options. So I was able to capture about 35 percent in a very short amount of time and that was based on the VIX. Now you'll see late in the day SPY really rallied very nicely once it was able to break above this base. We're looking at a five minute chart. So you can see here was the base, that was the highs, here was the lows. You can see how it channeled here from about 11.30 through just about 3 o'clock. And then it really broke out, okay? It broke out past these highs. Now, what's important isn't this breakout, but what are we going to look at when SPY is breaking out here to signal to us if we should get long or if we should short this move? What was your what would what would your signal be from my perspective anyway? Yes. And not only that the VIX is also going lower, but it needs to be going below the low end of its recent base, right? Just like SPY is breaking out above the high end of its recent base, we need the VIX to be breaking out breaking below the low end of its recent base. And as you can see, that's exactly what the VIX did. Notice that around 11.17 when I bought puts the first time, look at the major difference here, okay? This is where we saw the inverse correlation play out more accurately, okay? SPY VIX really broke its, you know, lows and it stayed near the lows of the afternoon around 3.30. That's much different than this morning when the VIX did not break lower, at which time I took a short position. If we pull them up side by side, We've got SPY on top. Let's change the colors here so it stands out. Okay, we've got SPY on top, VIX on the bottom. Now you can see it was really this 2160 level 
2140 to 2160 on VIX, I'll pull SPY away so you can see that more clearly. So really this 2160 to 21, uh, on down to 2140, that was really the, the level in VIX to me, okay, based on the action earlier in the day. And you can see once VIX really broke below it, that's when SPY made that big rip here from 133.37 all the way up to 133.70. Uh, We're talking about four points, because remember, every 10 points on SPY is one point on the S&P 500. So, you know, 40 points in SPY, 4 points on S&P 500, you translate into the options markets, and you're talking about a big, big move depending on which strike you're playing. So that's why the VIX is very important. Now, what's interesting about today, just to speak more broadly, is we had the VIX move higher, okay? It went above its high from Friday, but then in that same in the same day it also went below its low from Friday and actually closed near the lows and you know the VIX is actually now lower you know three days in a row again oh no sorry two out of the last three days and it's lower four out of the last five overall oh, excuse me four out of the last six okay however I'm just curious, because I have my opinion based on the VIX right here. Does anybody see anything in the VIX these last few days that might shape your bias? Lower lows, top heavy, we've got lower highs. So that would translate to what type of bias based on what you guys are saying? Well, it'd be a, a short bias on the VIX, but a it would be a bullish bias on the S&P 500. If you're if you're if you have a bearish bias on the VIX, you're going to have a bullish bias on the S&P 500 if you're a believer in the inverse correlation, which I believe we've shown why you should be. Now, so it seems like most people, judging by those who are participating, think the VIX looks kind of top heavy and it's downtrending. Is that a fair statement? Or is there anybody who sees something else in the VIX that's opposite or not in complete agreement with some of the things people have already said? Now this is what's all fun, this is what's so much fun about the market. Because we can all look at the same thing and we can all disagree. Because I personally have, uh, have a, a pretty bullish bias on the VIX. And what I see the last three days is I see that in general it stayed in the same range. Okay? And these three days seem very similar to these three days to me from May 14th through the 16th when the price action of the VIX was actually in the same range. Now, what this suggests to me is that at this level, if, if the VIX was a, you know, fixed security that you could buy and sell like a product, it would suggest to me that supply and demand is kind of in balance. I do know that it was lower by 3% today, but if you look, the low from Friday was 2130. It's only a little bit removed from that low, okay? And so it seems like it's, to me, it's having a hard time moving much lower, especially after this big bounce from 1998 all the way back up to 2248, because right then and there, that was a bounce of over 10%. And since that bounce, it has given up just about 
a, a less than 50%, talking from 20 up to 2250, and it's pulled back to 21. Okay, so it's pulled back lower. You know, it's it's a little below the midpoint of that range, which would be what 2125. Okay, so to me, I, I don't know. I, I kind of like this action in the VIX because if you look, the 20 range to 22 range for much of the year was resistance. We had a high here on February 10th, a high here on February 15th, a high at the 16th, a high on March 6th, and a high on April 11th, okay? And then another high here on, on March 9th. So what I see, in my opinion, is I actually see prior resistance potentially becoming support in the VIX. So, and then I also see a short-term downtrend, but a broader uptrend. Okay, it's, it's, it's been making some uptrends. But again, the main thing I notice is that for three days, the VIX hasn't been very volatile, meaning it's traded in a narrow range as far as open to close for three days in a row. And to me, that's kind of like a stock holding on to its gains. Now, when the VIX hold on, holds on to its gains, that, may, that means we're going to have more volatility. And remember, volatility works both ways. Without an elevated VIX, you don't get 100-point up days in the, S &P, uh, in the Dow and big moves higher in the S&P 500. Just look when the VIX was very low. Low VIX means low volatility. Look at March 13th through April 2nd in the VIX. Very low volatility. Look at that, those ranges in the S&P 500. You had, you know, you didn't have very many exciting days with the exception of this, this rip higher on March 26th, okay? You didn't have huge ranges. So low volatility is actually worse for trading in my opinion. But back to the overall concept of, you know, you got to pay attention to what the VIX is saying. Is it confirming the moves lower? Is it confirming moves higher? Okay. For instance, when you had this sharp move lower in the VIX on 521, okay, through 522, you had a, a big move lower on 521. For that day, that confirmed that the move was, you know, a solid move higher. And you can see that that was a great trade from 12.95 on up all the way to 13.28 okay before you saw the whiplash kind of from this big bounce in the VIX right and then again you had another sharp reversal here on May 23rd which was your first signal that you know you should actually go long because the just like today's move in the VIX at the open didn't confirm the move lower to me, uh, the move higher to me, that this sharp move off its highs for the VIX on May 23rd did not confirm the move lower for the S&P 500 and you actually had a nice bounce. Now you gotta, you gotta combine all of those things and take other things into consideration. For instance, you know, the S&P was in, in the 1330s. Well, we've got a lot of lows from February, 1335, 1337 and 1340 you know so to me there's a lot of previous lows that could act as resistance then you've got something like USO which oil couldn't really rally today as you guys know I like seeing the market led higher by oil and if it's not being led by oil then I'm not really a firm believer in rallies and we've shown a lot of evidence of of why that argument makes sense as well which you can review in numerous in a lot of our commentaries and whatnot. So all in all, that's why, you know, something like the VIX really shapes my approaches on an intraday basis. If 
if I'm buying the market and it's up 100 points, number one, I'm already chasing a little bit because it's up 100 points. So I need to look for technical reasons that support the case for a continued move higher. And one of my favorite indicators to look at is the VIX. Okay, next question. So I know we spent a lot of time on that question, but I cannot stress enough, the VIX, it's incredibly important that you understand it and how effective it can be in giving you accurate signals. So in one of my recent emails, I said GWBU was a good risk reward, except if it got halted, which is always a possibility. And this person wanted to question that statement as far as, have I seen big promos get halted in the past? Is there a reason that someone should worry about an APS being halted more than a TBX, you know, full exchange, best damn penny stocks, stock market authority pick? What are the warning signs that a pick will be halted? Do you have any indicators to look at? Well, the first answer is I recently, no, I haven't seen a, a stock get halted. Uh, a big promotion stock like an awesome penny stocks. The one that I remember getting halted that I know a lot of people lost a lot of money in was Sponge Tech Technologies, which I'm sure some penny stock veterans could tell you all about. And if you aren't fam familiar with Sponge Tech, then you should just Google it and it, you'll learn a lot about penny stock fraud. Um, now, as for do I see them get uh, halted often, I do not. But the SEC just put out a list of like 170 stocks that they halted because they were, you know, manipulated or something of the sort. Ironically enough, none of the stocks they listed were major promotions. None of the stocks they halted were major promotions. The stocks they all halted appeared to be shell companies that were just seeing a lot of manipulation from you know folks on iHub and, and smaller time pump and dumps. So the answer is no. I haven't seen any big promo picks get halted in the past. But you've, you've got to imagine that the SEC is looking into these people. I mean, you've just got to. We all see the manipulation that goes on on the level two on these things. As for is there a reason an APS pick would get halted other than before a bull exchange pick or a best damn penny stocks pick, my reason would be, well, who's doing the most illegal activity? In my opinion, based on what we've seen, I would say it's awesome penny stocks. You know. The way I gauge who's doing the most illegal activity is who's having the most successful pump and dumps, and that's without a doubt awesome penny stocks. So, and Aku, you make a good point. You know, who knows if, if I wouldn't be surprised if they had some people on the inside at the SEC making sure that you know the the microscope doesn't come over whatever it is they're doing, because it is quite preposterous to me that they haven't been halted yet or there hasn't been some type of release. I mean, we did see something with the FINRA release, but nothing ever really materialized from that. So the short answer is no, there haven't been any high profile halts on any of these promoted stocks, but it'll happen at some point. Is it going to happen next week, next month, next year, you know, or later on? That's the question we don't know the answer to. What I do know the answer is I'm not going to be involved when it does get halted. <laughs> and if it does, I'm not, and if I am for some reason in it when it does get halted, I'm not going to be holding with, you know, a large amount of money. I play stocks like GWBU day to day. I don't take them overnight very much. And as you guys have, should have noticed lately, stocks just aren't really gapping. Okay, so there's no reason for me to hold a stock overnight if it's not going to gap. That's the only reason I take stocks overnight anyway. Just in general on penny stocks, unless you're holding for a gap play, 
there's no, or you can't pattern day trade. I understand that as well. There's no reason to hold a stock overnight. Okay. Now, personally, I don't think GWBU will get halted. I don't think AGRT will get halted. I don't, I don't think that'll get halted. The reason I say, assuming GWBU doesn't get halted, isn't so much for you, it's more for me, okay? Because in the same sentence, I said GWBU was a good risk reward. I remember that email, it was a watch list I emailed out about a week or so ago. So while I don't ever, I don't really anticipate it to get halted, I say that because, geez, how stupid would I look if I said, oh, GW, GWBU is offering a good risk reward scenario, and then, you know, two days, three days later, it got halted. I would feel pretty bad for anybody who listened to me, so I just felt the need to throw that caveat in there. I mean, in reality, any penny stock can get halted. Any of these promotions can get halted. But when, some, when I use the term good risk-reward scenario, I think most of you take my words very seriously because you know that I don't use that term lightly with penny stocks, so I just had to make sure that I did put that caveat, you know, that little asterisk in there that unless it gets halted. But other, other than that, I wouldn't read too much into that statement I made. The one time I was seriously thinking that it might get halted was SNPK because of that FINRA filing or whatever it was. And um, and I told you guys so, and I and I I didn't take it overnight. So, all right. First stock is PRKR. So this is one that was on our watch list last week. I think uh, either Skip's value or Sly Dog mentioned it. I liked it from the moment I saw it because of the chart, number one, I mean, at, at a one-year high, and it was breaking above this resistance at 160. Towards the end of last week, we said we wanted to see the 150-ish level turn into support because that was prior highs or thereabouts, this high of 148. And you can see that's exactly what happened. 150 became support on that next day. Then we had a low volume pullback, and we had an even, and we put in a higher low, and we had an even greater volume increase today, highest move, highest volume on an up move today since 420. High, after, uh, before that, you had the highest volume on an up move today since July 2011. So overall, everything we liked about this chart last week and coming into the week. We still like today. It only it only it only got better. Okay. Now the problem is is that because we liked it last week, and some people probably bought it last week, and we know that the market was buying it last week because of the volume, we're gonna have sellers. We're gonna have profit takers. So we're gonna have previous demand becoming future supply. Now what's great is if the volume stays as high as it was today as the price is increasing, then that previous demand that's going to become future supply is going to be wiped out no problem. And the stock will continue to trend higher very easily. So what you want to be cautious for is a drop-off in volume as the price is increasing. Okay. Obviously, if the price decreases, we know that we want to see the volume drop off. We like seeing that, like we saw on Friday and like we saw here in late May. Okay? So that's okay. That'd be fine. If it does pull back, just like we wanted to see 150 become support, now we want to see the 160 level become support. Okay? That was the key breakout high. So that's going to be the level to watch now. Like to see 160 to the tops of these highs, 168. We had a 
167. Okay, so 160 to 167. I'd like to see become support now on any pullbacks. I'd like to see the stock, if it does pull back, I'd like to see it do so on volume of less than 500,000 shares or so. If it increases tomorrow, I'd like to see it do so on greater than 900,000 shares to keep pace with today's volume so that we know there's enough volume to be able to wash out the supply that today's traders will be at higher prices. Now we hit resistance at 185, which is pretty close to where we said resistance would be if it broke 160. Does anybody remember where we said the resistance level was on PRKR? From last week? Without looking at a chart. <laughs> Yes, 190. It was 190, so the high at 185 is very close to 190, so that's good because that means, that tells us we are looking in the right spot, okay? So, again, and we got the 190 high because that was where a, that was these highs here, this range, and it was where the majority of volume traded on the weekly chart from this range here. You had the low at 196, okay? So yes, yeah, so now resistance is gonna be 185, and then it's still gonna be 190, because we haven't hit it yet, and then 196 to $2, okay, and then 210. Let's look at the five minute chart. So nice volume at the open signaled you were gonna have something going on today. What I mean by that is you had greater volume at the open today than you had in the first five minutes of the day on Friday. Greater volume at the open today that you had in the first five minutes of the day on Thursday. Okay, The volume was as consistent as it was today as it's been at any other time in the last three days. What I mean by that is it traded, it was the most active today. Okay, Unlike on Friday when it had this random spike late in the day and didn't really do anything in the morning. And then on Thursday, it had a nice spike at the open, but didn't really do much the rest of the day. Here, the volume stayed consistent. It was consistent at the open, stayed above average, dropped off a little bit, and then the last hour, hour and a half really ramped up. So that's good. Nice close, a lot of demand right into the close. Looked like it might have wanted to retest the high of the day. So I expect good things tomorrow. Within the first 15 minutes, I want to see over 100,000 shares trade as the price is increasing. Very good chart definitely still in play. AGRT, so we spotted this one on Friday and we were lucky enough that, well first of all we weren't that lucky because we prepared. We put this on watch going into Friday for unusual accumulation, some suspicious activity because you can see that it had this 400,000 share day when it went from 11 cents to 39 cents what does that tell us when it trades very low volume but has a ridiculously wide range from 11 to 39 cents? What are some of the things something like that tells us? You guys are going to learn something very nice right here. Yes, low float. That's, that's the obvious one. I'm looking for the one that's not so obvious. Yeah, accumulation, but get specific. What is it really telling us when it has a range like this on high volume it opens at 12 cents, closes at 25, the high was 39.9, volume's coming out of nowhere. The day before the low was 9, the high was 25. What's that? What are those ranges telling us? Yes, a very big demand, okay? Front loading. Specifically, it's telling us that not only is it a low flow, not only are people getting shares at 10 cents and 15 cents at 20 cents, it's telling us, damn, they're buying this thing all the way up to 40 cents. What the hell's going on? What, why are they willing to buy 39s? Who the hell is buying it? Why are they willing to buy 25s when it was just at 12 cents, when it was just at 9 cents? On this day, why is somebody willing to print 39 cents again? Why are they willing to print 28 cents? What is going on? What is the stock telling you? It's telling you that somebody is buying it and he doesn't care where the hell he's getting filled. Maybe because he knows that at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where he gets filled. 
because he's going to make 100%. That's what a stock like AGRT tells me. Okay? Yeah, Coco, that, I didn't notice that. I didn't see you say that, but hey, that's exactly right. People don't care what price they get. Very, that's exactly what I was looking for. Okay? That's one of the more subtle things to notice. Not just that it's a low float, but that people aren't caring where they're buying shares. And then Friday, I mean, you saw the dump, but look at what time it occurred. Right, the last 15 minutes of the day. We all know that, you know, anytime you have something like that, it's very shady. Last 15 minutes of the day on a Friday when we know a pick is coming, it's like they waited until the last second to fill somebody up, okay? And the people who bought before, they don't mind necessarily because they know it's going to be so thin at the open that it's going to get right back to 30 cents really easily anyway, and you saw that today, okay? So huge move today, right? And for those of you who are newer, this stock actually got promoted in 2009. I remember it by a company, hypergrowthstocks.com and some other old outfits that used to be around. And then they did a reverse split, okay? You can see, you can see the promotion from 2009 if you look back. It was January, it was December 2009. Now it's adjusted for the reverse split, but you can see from 170 to 237. So I, I don't remember what exactly it was, but they did a reverse split and then they do it again a couple years later, okay? Now, you gotta look at the intraday chart for support and resistance because the daily isn't gonna tell us anything other than it made a huge move. Now here's where a lot of volume traded around three o'clock, so 48.4 was that low. I'd like to see that low hold. Below that, you've got this low at 46, but there's not much volume there, okay? You've got this low at 44, but again, there's not much volume. These are the, this is the range where you actually have some decent volume. So really 40 cents. 40 cents was the morning high. Once it broke it, it never really came back and tested it. So that's going to be your, your, your key support level is 40 cents below some of, below this 48 and a half cent level. As for resistance, you've got 53 cents, just call it 53 to 55, then 60, then 65, 70, 75, etc. As for the volume, we can't expect volume to be as great tomorrow as it was today, just because today was the first day of the promotion, so it's going to have the superior demand you know, than any other day moving forward, I would expect, okay, but that's okay. We just need enough volume. Okay, so 12 million shares traded a day, way more than that, 16 million shares traded a day. You know, I'd like to see 10 million shares trade again tomorrow, okay. What might cue us off that that much volume is going to trade? Let's get at least a million shares the first five minutes. First 15 minutes, we had 5.4 million shares trade. Let's get, you know, 3.5 million shares the first five minutes. That, that would signal some good things as the price is increasing. If the price is going to fall, I'd like to see it pull back on less than 3 million shares at the open. Opening 15 minutes. Opening 5 minutes if the price is falling, I'd like to do it, see it do so on less than a million shares. If you're in this from 20s and 30s and you haven't at least taken profits yet, um, that's kind of stupid to me. That's just my opinion. Just, nobody says you have to take all of your profits, but at least take some. Take 5%, 10% of them, you know, just a little percent so you, so you know you're not, so you know that stock haven doesn't think you're stupid. Okay, next one is THWI. Very nice chart recently, but if you look back further, you see that it downtrended on high volume. So we did get above this range 
where a lot of the volume was stuck at, so that's good. Now we have another range where a lot of volume is stuck from January 10th. What I, what I mean by stuck is that you had a lot of volume trade there and the price went lower. So anybody who bought that day is stuck. They're bag holding. So the range from this candle on January 10th, okay, the high is 6.75. Today's close was 6.6. So let's close above 675. Let's see if we can get that. And then you've got resistance at today's high of 79. Another high volume bar was from this day here when the high was 10 cents. The previous day's high was 85. The previous day's close was 86. So you know, above 7.9, just really that 9 to 10 cent range is going to be resistance. I do like the volume today. It increased. Very nice increase in volume. The price reacted nicely. Didn't close at the high, but, you know, closed above the middle end of the range. As for support, you know, five cents. Five cents capped it on Thursday, capped it on Friday, so let's see five cents turn into support. Ideally, the, clo the closer it stays to the current price of 6.6, the better this chart will look. Let's see if it traded volume at the open. Yeah, so you have some volume coming in at the open, but again, this is one where the volume's not very consistent. It, it comes and fits at the beginning of the day, it seems like, and then seems to trail off. So like first 15 minutes of the day today, you only had 450,000 shares, but the first 15 minutes of the day on Thursday, you had 2 million shares. Okay. Now, you do have a lot of demand that came in here between the low was six cents. So that's gonna be your support above five cents is six cents. That's simple enough. So I'd like to see it hold six cents. Why? Because that's where the most volume traded in a 15 minute interval today. So we know there was a lot of demand there because the price increased. Because there was a lot of demand there today, we'd like to see there be a lot of demand there tomorrow as well. If there's not, then you know, what's going on? How come people don't want to buy it there tomorrow if they were glad to buy it there today? So I would be cautious and I would expect it to pull back lower if that happened and it broke that level. ORYN, nice liquidity, traded over a million and a half dollars today just about. What I don't like is how far it closed off the highs. Let's make sure this is accurate. Okay, so it really did close at 96 cents. So I don't like that. I don't like how hard it, it, it fell from the high. Let's see if we see something on the intraday chart. So it, it really just kind of dried up. Okay. I will say I did receive some promotion emails on this right after the bell. So this seems like one that's a bigger budget promotion. Now, it gave up all of these gains, and it's having a hard time getting back above the one dollar level. So that's the first step. Let's see it stabilize above a dollar. If it can do that, then we can talk about resistance at today's high of 111. Okay. This high from Thursday, May 17th at 112 is pretty much in line with our high of 111. Then we'd have 116 and then 120. But until we get back above a dollar and stay there for a day, you know, we can't even talk about that. As for support, after today's big volume update, there's no reason it should go back below, you know, this 90 cent level. It held it the last three days, so it needs to keep doing that. Interesting risk reward here, because you can buy it at, what, 95 cents. Know that you're going to sell at a loss if it goes below 90. You'd be looking at a 5% loss, assuming you can get out rather easily, which it seems like you can because of the liquidity that it has, at least today. Meanwhile, if it does recover back up near this 120 high, you'd be looking at a gain of 25, you know, to 30 percent. 
So that makes, you know, you can potentially make 25% or potentially lose 5%. All of this is based on the fact that all of this is based on the assumption, though, that it will remain as liquid as it was today, which may not be fair to assume. And that's up to you, you know, if you want to take that risk. Because it did show the last week the liquidity did dry up a little bit. Okay. So there's no guarantee that you'd be able to get out at, at 90 cents. But judging by the ranges on the day and the overall liquidity to the stock, I would think you know, you'd be able to get out 90, 89, 88. This isn't, when I speak about this potential risk reward, I'm not talking about a day trade. I'm talking about, for those of you who might be more of the swing trader, this would be one to me that qualifies as a potential swing trade. I always try to point out potential swing trades when I see it for people. Okay. LGF. Be aware, uh, LGF has earnings after hours tomorrow, so we always need to be aware of a major company event. I learned that lesson the hard way when I bought a stock that had the most beautiful chart I'd ever seen. I went in very heavy. The next day, it gapped down 25%. I had no idea why, and then I found out they reported earnings that morning. God, did I feel stupid for not being aware of something like that. So LGF, highest volume on a down day today since April 16th, so about a month. But that's maybe to be expected considering that it did, you know, bounce from the 1120 up to, what, 1320 today. So it did make a nice bounce of 15, 20% or so. And you had some resistance from, you know, these prior lows that it had made. Okay, this was a level that it bounced from after downtrending, so that's how we identify support. It broke below it, so then we're going to expect that support level to become future resistance, which you can see it's been doing these last couple days. Now, it got above these most recent highs, which were acting as resistance. That's right around 1240, 12.50. I'd like to see that turn into support. That's in line with today's low of 12.66. Okay, below that 12.50 level, We'd have this low right here of 12.34 would really be important to me. Below that, I would expect a retest of this low here at 11.90. Below that, you know, you're just going to keep taking the next most recent lows. As a rule of thumb, anytime you're looking at most recent lows or most recent highs, just say quite simply, well, if we break that low, I would expect to move down to the next most recent low. If we break that low, I would expect to move down to the next most recent low. These things aren't robotic, so they're not automatically going to happen. However, if we break this low, you expect to move down to 1190, and then if it goes down to 1205 and then bounces to 1215, now you no longer expect to move down to 1190. You're just using 1205 as your as now your new most recent low. Does everybody understand what I mean by that? How I'm not saying that just because it breaks this low, it's going to automatically go to this low. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm coming up with an expectation. Okay, You want to have expectations. And then once it does something, I'll react to it and I'll adjust and come up with a new expectation. Okay. All right, because I, I know sometimes, you know, when I started out, I'd see, I'd see it break a low, and then it would, I'd be like, all right, now it's going to go to this low, and I would just wait and wait until it went to that low, and then it would bounce, and I'd be like, okay, I should short this bounce because I know it's going to that low. No, it doesn't work like that. Once it bounces, that becomes your next low. So that's what I want to, I want to make sure people understand that, and they aren't, um, tricking themselves into just waiting forever and ever for certain levels to hit. Okay, so resistance, today's high at 1320, that's just below a nice even number of 13, uh, today's high at 1319 is just below the even number of 1320. Okay, so uh, you can see that this was the base, right? 
It broke out above 13 and, and then ran to 1450 and then pulled back. You had a low at 1319 and a low at 1313. Well, what's so funny about that is our high from Thursday was 1312 and then our high today was 1319. Really pretty much exactly in line with this previous base. Okay, so previous support once it was penetrated is definitely acting as new resistance. So we need to reclaim that 1320 level. If we can do that, we've got this high at 1367, this high at 1383, and then $14. Above 14, you've got this high at 1430. You know, you've got some opens and some lows at 1444. You've got a low. You've got a close around 1453. You've got an You've got a close around 14.22, you know, so that 14.30 to 14.50 level, just a lot of price congestion from this range that went on here in late April. Let's look at the intraday chart and see if we notice anything. So a lot of dumping into the end of the day here on the 15-minute chart, but it did recover, finished off the low. That's nice. So this 1285 low is going to be your immediate support. Below that, you know, then we talk about today's low up to 1270. As for resistance, you can see towards the end of the day, it was never able to reclaim that 1295 level. 1294 high, 1294 high, 1293 high, 1294 high, 1293 high. So 1295. If it breaks 1295, in my opinion, it's it's going above 13 again. Okay. Within the first 15 minutes today, I'd like to see greater than 200,000 shares as the price is increasing. If it's going to pull back to support, I'd like to see it do so on you know 140,000 to 160,000 shares or less.